In this video, we're going to take the area chart that we made in part one and add some interactive tool tips to it to take it to the next level. These tool tips will run up and down the Y axis and along the X axis to show us the dates and the dollar values of the points that our mouse is hovering over. The first thing we're gonna do is add some style elements to the HTML file that we built in the first part. We'll add a rect block, a tooltip block, and a tooltip line block. All the code we'll be working on in this video is included in the description below. The first thing we're gonna do inside of our script is add our two tooltip divs. We'll add the first one here, and we will add the second one right below it. We will be adding a gradient to our area. We'll save that for the end. The next change we're gonna make is here inside of how we're formatting all of our tick values on the chart from part one. So we've, we've adjusted here the font size and color of the axis labels along the X and Y axis. We'll scroll down past our line and area generators and the paths to add our circle element. This is the circle that's gonna follow our mouse around while we're hovering over the chart. So we'll add this here uh, just below our line path. We're gonna declare a const circle, call SVG append, and append a circle to it. We're gonna set the radius to zero, that way we can't see it right away. We're gonna make the fill red, a stroke of white, so it's got a little nice outline around it. Give it a 0.7 opacity and set the pointer events to none. After that, we're going to add the red dashed lines that will also be following the mouse around and extending from this circle. We'll call the first one tooltip line X and the second one tooltip line Y. They're both pretty much identical. We're gonna append to the SVG a line element, give it a class of tooltip line, an ID, stroke color, stroke width, and we're gonna use stroke dashed array, two comma two to give it that dash. After that, we're going to declare our listening rectangle. If you saw the line chart video, this is the same thing we did there. This listening rectangle is what's going to be monitoring our mouse movement events on top of the visualization. We'll declare constant listening rect and append a rectangle to the SVG and make it the full width and height of our visualization. Once we've got our listening rectangle, we're gonna give it a mouse move function. And we're basically gonna say, when our mouse moves over this listening rectangle, do something. And the thing we're gonna do is all of this here. I'm not gonna go into all the specifics of what's happening here, but essentially this code here looks for the closest point in your visualization to where your mouse is. And it assigns the X position and the Y position of those to these two constants here. In our case, the X position is gonna be a date and the Y position is going to be the closing price of the Nintendo stock. We need those X and Y positions because that's what's going to decide our CX and CY positions of our circle that we created up above. So as our mouse moves, those CX and CY positions are going to be constantly changing. We also wanna be able to see the circle. And so we're going to give it a transition, a very short duration of 50, and we'll change the radius to five. So once our mouse is on here, the radius of the circle will grow. We also wanna control the red lines that we've declared up above. And so when our mouse moves over the listening rectangle, we're going to update the style of both the X and Y tooltip lines. And we're going to position them based on those X positions and Y positions. And so we're updating the X1, X2, and Y1, Y2 positions of those two dashed lines. Finally, we can start adding the tooltips to the page. First, we're gonna add our tooltip that's gonna go up and down the Y axis. We've had a display of block, set its left and top positions based on the width here and the Y position here. We're gonna tell it what it should say inside. So we'll use this HTML call. We're gonna give the closing price and we're gonna set it to two decimal points. When we hit save, we break the chart because we also need to close this listening rectangle event that's happening here. So I'm actually going to add that there, hit save again, our chart returns, and now when we hover our mouse, we're starting to see something. There's our little circle that we declared and the dashed lines and a nice tooltip running up and down the Y axis, telling us the dollar value of the particular point in time that we're hovering over. But we need one along the X axis too, so we know what date we're looking at as well. So we'll grab our tooltip raw date and add that to the screen as well. Same idea here. We're setting the left and top using our X position and our height. And then in the HTML area, we're telling it to show us the date inside the tooltip. When I hit save, we now have the date running along the bottom of the chart. Pretty cool, right? I think so anyway. But they get stuck if we leave. So we need to tell the page what to do when our mouse leaves the visualization. That's where this comes in. So we call our listening rect again and give it a mouse leave function. And these are all the things we'd like it to do when the mouse leaves the chart. And so we're going to transition the circle back down to a radius of zero, tell the tooltips to not display. We're gonna adjust the positions of our tooltip lines X and Y, and then also tell them not to display at all. When we hit save for in here, we can see everything. 
and it follows our mouse. But if we leave, they disappear. And to tie it all together, let's add a chart title by appending a text element to our SVG, giving a class of chart title, setting the X and Y positions, declaring a font size, a font weight, a family, and the text we'd like to be there. So when I hit save, there it is, Nintendo Company. And we'll add a source, appending another text element, giving it a class as well if you wanted to style it with some CSS, declaring an X and a Y, giving a font size, a font family, and the text we'd like to display. We hit save and there's our source right down here. So now that we've got the title and the source credit added, let's go back up to the top and add in our gradient. To add the gradient, we're gonna add the following lines of code. We're gonna declare a constant called gradient and give it svg.appendDEFS. We're gonna append a linear gradient and give it an ID attribute of gradient. We're gonna set the X1, X2, and Y1 all to 0% and the Y2 to 100%. And we'll set an attribute of spread method to pad. We're gonna append a stop to this gradient. We'll set the offset to 0% and the stop color to our money colored green that we have and we'll set the stop opacity to one. We're then going to append another stop to this gradient. We'll set the offset to 100%, the stop color to our money color green again, and the stop opacity to zero. The final thing we have to do is we'll go down to where we've defined our area path right here. We're gonna delete the fill color and we'll replace it with URL and then inside of these parentheses, we'll put pound gradient. When we hit save, we get this nice, sleek, sharp little gradient into our chart. And there you have it. We've added gradient and a really nice series of tool tips to our area chart. In the next video, we're going to add a slider element that will let us control the range of dates that we're displaying inside of our chart. I'll see you then, and thanks for watching.